Want 10% off your MTG singles? Go to Flipside Gaming and enter the promo code POWER in all caps to receive 10% off $10 or more. Want to see extra videos? Sign up to our Patreon and get access to our Discord, early access to videos, Patreon-only videos, and much more. Need a better life tracker? Download the Gauntlet app for your phone. It keeps track of your life totals, counters, win rate, and so much more. It's free, so go check it out. More info is in the description. Thanks for watching. Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, welcome to Playing With Power MTG, where we play with the most powerful cards in the most powerful formats. Welcome to the Double Up. Sometimes games go long and sometimes they win quickly. We still want to showcase some more games from Magic Fest Vegas this year, so we are bringing two games to you tonight. We attended Magic Fest Vegas this year and had a great time meeting all of you and jamming some really fun games. We also had a great time playing with you all at SCGCon this year and also got some amazing games in. Thank you to everyone who made it out and said hello. A quick thanks to all of our Patreons for their support. We really could not do this without you. If you'd like to become a patron, please check out the link in the description below and check out some of the perks our patrons get. You can also show your support by liking this video and subscribing to our channel if you're not already a subscriber. It really helps out a lot. Now, let's start out by showcasing our fighters this evening. First, we have Ryan playing Goto, Bandit Warlord. Ryan had a mulligan all the way to 5, and his opening hand contains a Red Elemental Blast, Great Furnace, Dwarven Ruins, Imperial Recruiter, and a Rite of Flame. Next, we have Daniel, playing the 4-color pairing of Timna the Weaver and Thrasios, Triton Hero. Daniel's opening hand contains a Nature's Claim, Temple Garden, Flusterstorm, Elvish Mystic, Talisman of Dominance, Dark Tutelage, and a Limb Duel's Vault. After that, we have Claire, piloting Hope of Girapur. Claire also had a mulligan down to 5, and her opening hand contains a Rashadden Port, Mikokoro, Center of the Sea, Ward of Bones, Oracle's Vault, and a Ghost Town. Finally, we have Tyler, piloting the two-color pairing of Oaken, Eye of Chaos, and Zendersplit, Eye of Wisdom. Tyler also had to mulligan to 5, and his opening hand contains a Swiftfoot Boots, Spark Double, Island, and Two Mountains. Without further ado, let's kick off this fascinating foray into foreboding frilly frippery. Daniel pulls triple sevens on the slot machine and gets a start us off. Daniel plays a Temple Garden into play untapped, paying two life. He casts an Elvish Mystic. He passes. Claire plays a Rashadden Port for turn. She ends the turn. Tyler plays a Mountain for turn and also passes. Ryan plays a Great Furnace for turn and gives the turn to Daniel. Daniel plays a Blooming Marsh for turn. He casts Dark Tutelage. He ends his turn. Claire plays a Makokoro, Center of the Sea. She passes the turn. Tyler plays an Island for turn. He casts Swift Foot Boots. He passes. Ryan plays a Mountain for turn. He casts Ride of Flame, adding two red. He casts Imperial Recruiter. Recruiter enters, and he fetches up a Treasonous Ogre into his hand. All through, Ryan passes. During his upkeep, Daniel's Dark Tutelage trigger goes onto the stack. Claire responds by activating Rashad and Port, tapping down Daniel's Blooming Marsh. Tutelage resolves, and he reveals a Llanowar Elves. Daniel plays a Mana Confluence for turn. He casts a Talisman of Dominance. He taps his Mana Confluence to cast Llanowar Elves. He passes the turn. Claire plays a Ghost Town for turn. She casts Metal Worker. She gives the turn to Tyler. Tyler plays a Mountain for turn and passes. Ryan plays a Dwarven Ruins for turn. He attacks Tyler with his Imperial Recruiter. All through, he passes. During his upkeep, Daniel reveals a Sylvan Library through his Dark Tutelage. During his main phase, he casts Sylvan Library. He ends his turn. Claire starts off her turn by activating Metalwork. She reveals four artifacts in her hand, adding eight to her mana pool. She casts Ward of Bones. She plays a Reliquary Tower for turn. She casts Sculpting Steel. Sculpting Steel resolves and enters as a copy of Metal Worker. She casts a Magistrate Scepter and passes the turn. Tyler plays a Mountain for turn. He casts Loxodon Warhammer. He passes. Ryan plays a Mountain for turn. He casts Treasonous Ogre. Ogre resolves and he pays 18 life and adds 6 red through the Ogre to cast his commander, Goto, Bandit Warlord. Goto resolves and he fetches up a Helm of the Host onto the battlefield. 
he pays an additional 15 life to activate the equip ability of Helm of the Host. In response to the equip, Daniel casts Nature's Claim, targeting Helm of the Host. Helm is destroyed, and Ryan gains 4 life. Plans thwarted, Ryan passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Daniel casts Limb Duel's Vault. In response, Ryan casts Red Elemental Blast, targeting the Vault. In response, Daniel taps his Talisman for blue and casts Flusterstorm. Red Elemental Blast is countered, and Limb Duel's Vault resolves. He looks at the top five, likes what he sees, and rearranges them accordingly. During his upkeep, Daniel reveals a Mana Vault through his Dark Tutelage. During his draw step, he draws two extra cards through Sylvan Library. He pays four life and keeps one extra card. In his main phase, he casts Mana Vault. He casts Demonic Tutor. Tutor resolves and he fetches up a card into his hand. He casts Isochron Scepter. Scepter resolves and he imprints Dramatic Reversal. He proceeds to generate infinite colorless and infinite green mana. He taps his Talisman to cast his commander, Thrasios, Triton Hero. He then draws his deck through Thrasios. With Ward of Bones stopping his plans to win, he taps his mana confluence to cast Chain of Vapor, targeting Ward of Bones. Ward bounces and Claire sacks the land, copying Chain of Vapor, targeting Isochron Scepter. In response, Daniel pays two life and casts Mental Misstep, countering the chain. He casts a Felwar Stone. He follows up with a Laboratory Maniac. He activates Thrasios, scrying and drawing a card, to win the game. In this game, we once again have Ryan piloting Goto, Bandit Warlord. Ryan's opening hand contains a Chrome Mox, Lotus Petal, Mountain, Basalt Monolith, Argentum Armor, Simeon Spirit Guide, and a Duretti, Scrap Savant. Next, we have Eric piloting Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. Eric mulls the six, and his opening hand contains Elvish Mystic, Wirewood Symbiote, Scent of Ivy, Birds of Paradise, and two snow-covered forests. After that, we have Ronald piloting Zakama, Primal Calamity. Ronald's opening hand contains a forest, Misty Rain Forest, Flooded Strand, Earthcraft, Dryad Arbor, Reclamation Sage, and a Recruiter of the Guard. Finally, we have Brian piloting Joyra, Weatherlight Captain. Brian's opening hand contains a Windfall, Spire Bluff Canal, Ethereum Sculptor, Prismatic Vista, Sulphur Falls, Ponder, and a Herald of Kozilek. All ready to go, Eric starts us off. Eric plays a snow-covered forest. He casts an Elvish Mystic. He passes to Ryan. Ryan plays a mountain for turn. He casts a Lotus Petal. He casts a Chrome Mox, exiling Simeon Spirit Guide. He cracks his Lotus Petal and casts Trinosphere. <laughs> really putting the other two players behind, he passes the turn. Ronald plays a Dryad Arbor for turn. With not much else, he passes. Brian plays a Spire Buff Canal for turn. He sighs heavily because of Trinosphere and passes. Eric plays a Snow-Covered Forest for turn. He casts his commander, Selvala, Heart of the Wilds. He passes the turn. Brian plays a Mountain for turn. He casts Basalt Monolith. He ships his turn. Ronald plays a Misty Rainforest for turn. And seeing as it's not doing anything else, and since Ryan brought this on all of them, Ronald attacks Ryan with his Dryad Arbor. He ends his turn. Brian plays a Prismatic Vista for turn and passes. Eric plays a Birds of Paradise for turn. He gives it over to Ryan. Ryan casts a Goblin Engineer. The Goblin resolves and he fetches up a Hammer of Nizan into his graveyard. He passes the turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Ronald cracks his Misty Rainforest for a Stomping Ground into play tapped. Brian also decides to crack his Prismatic Vista for a snow-covered island. Ronald plays a Taiga for turn. He casts a Reclamation Sage. It enters and blows up Ryan's Basalt Monolith. Ronald passes. Ryan plays a Sulphur Falls for turn. He casts a Herald of Kozilek. He also passes. Eric begins his turn by casting Scent of Ivy, revealing five cards from his hand, giving Selvala plus five plus five. He taps Selvala for seven. He casts Primal Command, choosing to put Trinosphere onto the top of Ryan's library and searching up a Woodland Bellower into his hand. He casts Wirewood Symbiote. He activates Wirewood, bouncing Elvish Mystic and untapping Selvala. He taps Selvala for another seven and casts Woodland Bellower. Bellower resolves and he searches up an Eternal Witness onto the battlefield. Witness triggers and he returns Primal Command to his hand. He recasts Elvish Mystic and ends his turn. 
Ryan starts off his turn by activating Goblin Engineer, sacrificing Chrome Mox, and returning Basalt Monolith to the battlefield. He then uses Basalt Monolith to cast Duretti, Scrap Savant. He activates Duretti, sacrificing Basalt Monolith, and returning Hammer of Nazan to the battlefield. The hammer triggers, and Ryan attaches it to Goblin Engineer. With nothing else, he passes. Ronald starts off his turn by attacking Duretti with his Reclamation Sage, killing it. He plays a Marsh Flats for turn. He follows up with a Wheel of Fortune. Everyone discards their hand and draws a new hand of seven. He cracks his Marsh Flats to fetch up a Plains and then passes the turn. Ryan plays a Snow-Covered Island for turn. He casts a Mana Crypt. He casts his Commander, Joyra, Weather Like Captain. He casts an Is It Signet. He casts a Commander Sphere. All through, he ends his turn. At the end of Ryan's turn, Ronald casts Path to Exile, targeting Selvala. In response, Eric casts Vines of Vastwood, targeting Selvala and Fizzling Path. Eric plays a Wiredwood Lodge for turn. He activates Selvala, adding 6 green to his pool. He casts Vitalize, untapping these creatures. He taps Selvala again, adding another 6 to his pool. He casts Rishkar's Expertise, drawing 6 cards. He then casts Life's Legacy from Rishkar, sacrificing Woodland Bellower and drawing another 6 cards. He casts Scale Up, targeting Birds of Paradise to make it a 6-4. He activates Wirewood Lodge, untapping Selvala. He taps Selvala again, adding 6 green again. He casts Finale of Devastation, where X equals 4. He fetches up a Teemer Sabertooth onto the battlefield. Eric then demonstrates his loot. He taps Selvala for 6. He then casts a 1 CMC Elf from his hand. He uses Wirewood Symbiote to bounce the Elf and untap Selvala. He then returns Wirewood Symbiote through his Teemer Sabertooth. He recasts Wirewood and the Elf, netting 1 green with each iteration. He repeats the loop for infinite green. He uses mana to bounce and recast Eternal Witness. He returns Finale of Devastation to his hand. He then uses Finale to fetch all of the creatures out of his library, give them all plus 100, plus 100, and haste, and attacks for the win. Ladies and gentlemen, what a fun set of games those were. Congrats to Eric and to Daniel on their respective wins. They dominated their games and really were able to get some seriously fast wins. They were both excellent pilots of their decks and did a fantastic job at the table. A big thanks to the other players who also played with us during that weekend. We had a great time playing with all of you at Magic Fest Vegas this year. We also had a great time playing with all of you at SCG Con this year as well. It was super fun and look forward to more of those games in the coming months. Well, that about wraps it up for this episode. Tune in next time when we will duke it out to see who will be king of the competitive EDH table. Thank you so much for watching, and we will see you next time.